Um, basically, there are going to be times when you are sort of um, inundated with alerts and you need to reduce these alerts to a manageable state. So what we want to do is we want to use watch list to help filter the logs to ensure that we are only alerted on events of interest and prevent these benign events from becoming alerts. We want to create a table that we can use to map or use to reference to filter the watch list against. And we want to create a schedule rule to leverage that watch list to help filter those alerts. So I'm going to show you some examples uh, in doing that. But first, I want to kind of show you the the walkthrough of what that looks like. So in this example, we have a SOC engineer. He is going to create a watch list Excel file. Now, in the previous uh, use cases, we referenced a template, but you can also, you don't have to reference a template, but you do need it to you know, leverage the entities and the UEBA features, but you can also leverage some UEBA features with, if you were to create it, it's just a it's just going to be a couple more steps, right? It's not going to be as going to be as easy as just downloading a template. But let's say we have some devices uh, and a list, and we export it to CSV. We upload the CSV to the portal, and now we have those sort of devices that we want to allow and suppress those alerts. And in this example, we have pen test lab, the prefix of Linux 01, 02. And we want to suppress those alerts. We want those alerts gone so we can focus on the important alerts. Then we want to generate incidents from those trigger automation playbooks so that we allows us to abstract all that um, data that we don't want, uh, events that we don't want to get alerted on and trigger the automation around those workflows, okay? So what we're going to do is I'm actually going to show you how I would create a watch list. So this is going to be something that you can do is you find out what your table is and then we want to understand what entities are. So what I have here is we want to specify the table. Maybe we want the fails. So we're going to go to look for the fails in the syslog and we want, just want to summarize it by computer, which we have a list there. We notice that pen test lab is quite chatty, right? And we want to really just filter it and get those other machines. So how do we do that? Well, now you're going to have to take it a step further and leverage the watch list. So the watch list, if I open up the watch list uh, tab here, it's going to take me to these assets right here. I have tagged assets, device owners, and whitelisted devices. I'm going to leverage whitelisted devices. And when I look at that list, it's just four devices. Pen test lab, very simple list with a computer column name. Okay. Now, once I do that, I need to reference this watch list. So let's just do let whitelist equals uh, underscore git watch list. And then we want to specify that string of that alias for the watch list. So this watch list is going to be whitelisted devices. So I'm going to put that alias here. And then I'm going to run, and just to verify that I'm able to get that, I'm going to put whitelist here, and be sure to put a semicolon. And we have these devices that we are whitelisting, right? And as Innocent said, you need to I'd specify the search key to kind of identify what you're going to be referencing or searching against. So we're using the computer field, okay? So once we have that, we have our we have our logs, and now we need to filter. We're going to join. And we need to bring that query back in, right? And now we're going to join the whitelist table on computer. The only, if you have separate columns like the custom, this table, right? This table is different from this table. There are two different tables we're going to be kind of comparing. They, if they have different column names, then you have to do the left and right referencing. But if they have the same column name, then you don't need to do that and you can just specify the column. So now we have those columns, but as you can see, it's not really what we want. So we want to do kind equals left anti because we want anything that's not a match, right? So we run this and then we get the list of computers. We have PC and desktop. All the pen test devices are off. If we do just left outer, then it's more like I want those specific devices, right? So this is going to be the left anti. 
and we want anything that's not on the list. And then the, you take this query and you go to your analytical role and then you simply just add and build your query out. So you go here, you go into the portal, you build your schedule analytical role and you say uh, this is custom multiple failed login attempts. OK. And we're just going to say, let's just call it maybe initial access. And we're going to paste that rule in. And we also want to validate that test data. As you can see, the test data shows well, some alerts it's on the right side. Simulated the data. So we want to view the query results. And as you can see, this is what we want to see. These are the two machines we want to alert on. So we just want to verify that. And then we want to map those entities. So we're going to just going to go to the host and then we're going to specify the host name. We specify the computer and maybe you want to add more entities later, but we'll go into that later on. And the alert detail, maybe you want to do something custom. You just say multiple login attempts on computer you're referencing the column name computer right and then we want to save these as well and then i'm going to set this to just 24 hours so multiple login attempts within 24 hours set these you know conditions based off your organization and your strategy but for now we're just going to alert um, and we just set, put the threshold to say maybe we want more than five events okay and we want to group all these events. We want to also group them by device. And I'm going to go a little fast, but we just want to group them by device. And then we also want to trigger some automation. So we're going to do automation, uh, send email. And then if you've built your, if you've already pre-built your playbook, this is where you add those playbooks. Okay. And then you can reference those playbooks. Okay. And you're going to have to make sure you have the necessary permissions. So um, you just click on this little button to manage those permissions and type in the uh, playbook you want. Click here and apply, approve it. So you have the necessary rights so that this Sentinel workspace can, uh, can have author the authority to run playbooks in those other resource groups. So now we can reference here and then we'll apply it. Um, we'll just delete this end. And then that's it. You created a rule that will aggregate these uh, alerts within the same entity, and then you create that item. Okay, so that is an example of building it. And once you build it out, I'll show you what happens with the automation. But um, now that we know about reducing those alerts, right, and getting rid of anything that is that you don't want to really get alerted on, we now want to enrich.